I was absolutely blown away by your comments and questions arising out of the energy storage video that I did the other day. I wanted to quickly respond. Now, my premise on that video is that energy will be as big or bigger than the automobile business. But don't take my word for that. Elon Musk believes that energy will be bigger than auto. In fact, energy storage alone is likely to hit 400 billion in sales by 2030 and continue to increase from there. Auto at 20 million units per year, which everybody thinks is just a crazy number, will potentially be about that same dollar amount. Say by that time, the average car might be 20,000 each, but with lower profits than the energy business on just that hardware by itself. There are multiple ancillary businesses associated with auto, and I'm going to show those separately in my ongoing analysis. Insurance, in-car entertainment, charging stations, FSD, robo-taxi, used car service, used cars rather, service on cars and, and, and uh, such. And there's probably going to be more ancillary uh, kinds of opportunities for the auto part of the business too. But just on the hardware, energy, and if you take the, hard, the energy hardware and you take the car hardware, it is very likely that these are going to be similar size businesses in 2030. I'm also going to consider semi truck as a separate business. It also has the potential to be in the $400 billion range all by itself. This would like, likely require about 2 million units per year as of 2030, which is possible since it's a 4 million unit business worldwide. And I think that that's unlikely by 2030, unfortunately. But Half of that is my hopium. Uh, Brian uh, Wong thinks that maybe they take all of the business or uh, 3 million of those units, and he thinks it could happen by 2030. I think that that is uh, even uh, too hyper bullish for me. Anyway, uh, even the million probably will not be an easy get, but I'll have another video on that as well coming up. All right. You've this is Randy Kirk. You want to hit like, you want to hit subscribe, you want to hit notify. Why do you want to do those things? Because it helps to build the channel. As I've mentioned, I'm trying to double my total viewership in 2024. 20, uh, in 2023, we had uh, we're running about 500,000 a month. Uh, so I'd like to I'd like to move that up to a million a month, and you guys can help. And the way you help is you hit like and you hit subscribe and you hit notify and notify helps you because that's going to tell you when the next videos are coming up like the one i'm going to do on autos tomorrow like one that's probably going to come up tomorrow from larry goldberg where he's got some really special stuff that he's working for like the news show that i'm going to be doing later this afternoon um that uh, is the only news show you know every single week so you want to be notified i mean on saturday and then you want to be notified about these things um including the regular shows on each and every morning uh, after the bell, and then the shows where I have co-hosts every single evening uh, at around five o'clock California time, where we talk about what happened to the stock market and Tesla during the day. All right. So you want to do all those things. And then you guys asked for it. So I did it. I set up a new, less expensive Patreon level. You can now support the channel for just $3 a month. I think pretty much everybody can afford that. So that would just be helping make this channel more successful, make it more, make, make, give me more opportunities to spend some money in order to make this news broadcast even better. And then, um, you know, just because it's make, make, giving you a benefit. And so, you know, help out by joining Patreon. That information will down, be down below uh, as well. Let's get into the meat here. Um, this morning, I put up a... Second, I told you all that already, or did I? I put up this morning a second video in the series on FSD and RoboTaxi, and it's hitting huge numbers of views. And I'll put that card up later. Um, okay, the Powerwall and Megapack business, as mentioned, is likely to hit 400 billion, but that isn't the total story on energy either. Tesla is also creating all kinds of methods for co companies, governments, individuals to save energy reduce the cost of energy to end to, to, to the end user and to produce energy. So there is solar and virtual power plants, VPPs, Tesla acting as a wholesaler or, and or a retailer of electricity, so like a utility. Wherever software and AI can be used to create an arbitrage situation that makes sense, 
<clears throat> Elon seems to be ready to make that happen. But for this episode, we're concentrating on your outstanding comments. So here we go. Number one, we have uh, Bo, Bo Arts. And he says, before I would accept your premise, number one, what is the cost curve of batteries? And how does that affect your $400 per kilowatt cost in 2030? Well, I did kind of mention that it's hard to know what it's going to be costing in 2030. The curve that I see coming forward is that we're going to have lots of batteries and lots of raw materials up to about 2027, 2028. And that is also uh, uh, the, the opinion of the, uh, I, I'm forgetting his first name all of a sudden, Jordan, Jordan Giesegi, um on uh, the limiting factor. He thinks that there's we're going to be looking okay until 27, 28, and then there's going to be potential shortages. And we'll talk about what those shortages might look like in the future. But so the cost is probably going to come down between now and then as there's lots of supply. I don't know how much, but it's coming down a little already. And then um, it might go up again during that period and then come down again after we get over that hump, if you will, in terms of raw material supplies. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And based on what Tony Siba has said in the past, in terms of the way these costs go down as manufacturing prowess goes up, um, we could see just uh, uh, a drops in, in the cost just related to that as we become more effective at making these battery packs. So uh, yes, might it be less than $400 a kilowatt hour average? It might be. Um, and of course, the lower the cost, uh, the more applications there will be, and it even increases the TAM more. But that is a very, very good uh, for Boarts. That's something I've raised uh, previously, and I'm glad you raised it again. Number two, he says, <clears throat> stationary storage has many more chemistries and form factor possibilities than battery electric vehicles. Will sodium, flow batteries, et cetera, affect costs significantly? Yes, again, the, the amount of activity that's going on right now in labs um, and actually in uh, and people putting, uh, you know, potential alternatives on the ground in actual use. Uh, it's a, There's a whole bunch of stuff taking place. We have solid state. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So yes, there's going to be other ways that might get the cost down or the efficiencies up or just create the amount of raw material needed uh, in order to get the job done through 2030. Now, after 2030, uh, the longer this keeps on, the more of these chemistries, the more of these form factors, et cetera, that take place. Yeah, we could be looking at significantly lower prices <clears throat> and significantly more use cases. Number three, he says, who are the other competitors in this space? What if CATL, BYD, or other battery makers decide to create a mega pack product? They already have manufacturing capabilities. Is Tesla software enough of a moat to stay on top in this industry? All right, so that's a three-part question. Number one, uh, CATL, CATL um, and BYD for sure are already making these kinds of uh, batteries, uh, the, you know, the mega pack style batteries. Uh, the next uh, commenter, which is Azhar Khan, dash YS5LE um, says Fluence Energy, FLNC on the stock exchange is a storage, does storage batteries like Tesla, and he expects them to grow 10 times over the next 10 years. You can follow above to see how big and profitable the business is, but I, he expects Tesla to be the leader in energy and the market is huge. So that that's another company, Fluence. They're well uh, well known in this space, but much smaller than Tesla at this point. Um, yes, but CATL and BYD are certainly going to be big factors in this category. It's just that it's such a monstrously huge category. So on the one hand, yes, I would expect Tesla to stay ahead on software and hardware. I think they'll actually uh, uh, be a superior at both, superior at manufacturing, uh, uh, better, you know, the, the, their capabilities in manufacturing will allow them to have a, a, a lower... Um, uh, <laughs> cost of cost of uh, of uh, invest return on invested uh, capital. There we go, <laughs> ROIC, um, and uh, cause them to be able to make the products at, at lower costs. Um, and they will also vertically integrate as they're doing, for instance, with the lithium refinery plant in Texas. So for all those reasons, I expect Tesla to yes stay stay ahead, but they won't really need to, but they will. 
okay? And uh, they'll sell all they can possibly make. All right, then we have Beatles for sale. Uh, he says, I have much to say. First, I love that you are discussing Tesla energy. Several points that you may or may not disagree. It is, is, it is Tesla's energy software that provides virtual power that has the biggest advantage over other companies. Well, maybe, but there's lots of different things uh, that do affect uh, the Tesla advantage, as I just mentioned. But one of those is, of course, the arbitrage. Next, I would be throw, he would be throwing more money into building battery factories and less into gigafactories if I had to make a choice. I don't think Tesla has to make a choice. They might be making choices because of the availability of batteries. And uh, we'll talk about in a minute what may have slowed them up last year with regard to their setting up as many plants as I thought they would set up this year or at least announce. He says, I still believe part of the delay was working out the manufacturing method on how to build megapacks as the supplies changed. I think that there might have been, I've mentioned this before, and this is based on reporting by, uh, by um, <laughs> yeah, boy, my brain is on, uh, on hold this morning, um, <laughs> by Bradford Ferguson. Uh, he did a lot of this original reporting, and he thought that the big holdup at Lathrop was on the equipment that moved the batteries, uh, the, the battery pack, the full packs, uh, from the end of the line into the uh, into the parking lot, and then pick them up again and put them onto flatbeds in order to be taken off down to the uh, to the uh, wherever they're going, wherever they're heading from there, whether it's on a barge or whether that's on a on a semi truck or a train. Who knows? It can be transported a bunch of different ways. So he he believed that the big holdup was they didn't have enough of those. I forget what they're called. Uh, to pick them up and put them, because they're huge, they're massive. Uh, and so now they have those in Lathrop and they're uh, probably going to buy more. Uh, and that is helping them to expand their capacity rapidly. Um, that is probably maybe what was holding them up everywhere else too, because there just wasn't anybody else in the business of making these. Uh, now maybe they're setting up suppliers in other places, or maybe they've got the one supplier who is dramatically upping their game. All right. Um, next from Beals for Sale, he says, uh, why is the U.S. still building new natural gas plants if they're not as good for the environment um, as solar and batteries? Not only are these batteries much better for the environment, but they're way lower in cost, especially when combined when you're combining with solar or with wind. Uh, the reality is, I, I, I looked this up, is that the gas plants are still being built about seven per year, six or seven per year. That is way down from what it was 10, 12 years ago. Um, and I'm expecting that gas, uh, the get energy producing gas plants uh, uh, are probably going to be a thing of the past very shortly. There are about 20 that are currently in the pipeline that I guess will continue to be built but not clear how in you know two or three years out whether there will still be making these gas plants. Um, so perhaps in colder climates, solar doesn't make as much sense in 2023. Solar, uh, 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 Tony Seba has shown, he's done an elaborate analysis on this, that even in the coldest climates, solar works extremely well. Uh, wind is, of course, can go almost anywhere that you can uh, put it, uh, that there is a wind. And now there's, they're coming up with so many different wind methods uh, on the ocean, ocean-based wind methods. Uh, I might do a whole video on that eventually, even though Tesla's not in the wind business, but it's absolutely fascinating. Or maybe we'll put that on the new channel. Did you know we're putting up a new channel that'll be all about science? Brian Wong and I will be doing a science channel with probably one video a week that talks about a whole bunch of different things happening in the world of science. Um, also, you can explain how customers pay for Tesla energy. That is a video into itself <laughs> because sometimes they're a retailer, sometimes they're a wholesaler, sometimes they're just producing the energy and and the utilities are or whoever it is that is using it is right there using their own energy. Um, but yeah, that's that's a complex issue. All right. And then finally, he says, if Tesla puts a lot of upfront costs into this whole process, then throwing batteries, uh, doing a lot more batteries might be less uh, advantageous than cars at this point. All right. So when it comes to these mega packs, at least in the United States, there is a bookkeeping and payment issue that takes longer to get the cash flow out of batteries by far than, than getting cash flow out of cars. However, I think that's not going to slow Tesla down. 
Uh, and I, I'm thinking that almost in 100% of the cases, they're getting all of their money out within a year. Again, that's a very complex issue, but there are, uh, what do you want to call You put the battery in, and then whoever it is that you're selling the battery to, in particular, if it's utility size installations, like you know, 60, 100, 200, 300 batteries in one location, there's there are uh, uh, there are um, points at which Tesla has to prove that the battery is producing what it said it could and helping them to arbitrage, et cetera, at the levels expected. And then as you hit those uh, data points, then Tesla gets paid is kind of how I understand it. I could be way off on that, but that from various different sources uh, have been saying that this is how it takes place, as opposed to getting paid immediately or getting paid up front. I think they do get some up front, by the way. All right. Mega Wilderness, a common uh, contributor to the uh, page, uh, to the to this video in terms of uh, uh, making comments. He says, all energy sources have the ability to bid to provide power as defined by the grid. Yeah. So uh, whether it is, um, uh, you know, coal power or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, produced by gas, or it could be um, dams, it could be um uh, what do you call it? Thermal energy. I mean, any kind of energy that's out there obviously is all part of the grid. And those folks could also be putting in battery packs in order to balance their distribution and get the maximum, get even better uh, capabilities out of what they're doing. That is absolutely 100% true. In fact, uh, wind and, and of course, solar are already doing this in big numbers. Um, so then we have Nokia Getrich. N-O-K-I-A-G-E-T-R-I-C-H. He says, Elon also said that 100 gigawatts uh, would be, they'd be producing 100 gigawatts in 4680s by the end of 2023. I don't think Elon ever said that. He might have. I don't think so. But the goal is, of course, 100 gigawatts. I think this will be uh, by the middle of 2024 and more. Uh, Larry Gold, uh, Goldberg said yesterday he thinks it's going to be substantially ramped up in 2024, you know, they're putting uh, uh, the full 100 gigawatts uh, should be, by the end of the year, they're starting the second line, providing a second 100 gigawatts, and then 400 additional gigawatts, I'm sorry, 500 additional gigawatts is being planned for Reno plus 100 in Berlin. So yeah, so he goes on to say, well, so one terawatt by 2030 might be a fantasy. Okay, let's say we only get to 750,000. Uh, gigawatts instead of a full terawatt. Um, that would be okay. I'm okay with 300,000 instead of 400,000. I mean, 300 billion instead of 400 billion in business would be okay with me. All right. So then we got John, John DK, uh, J O N D K. He says, uh, A shame how young people think the world is ending due to climate change when in reality we can be fully sustainable by 2035 thanks to the rapidly dropping costs of solar, wind, storage, et cetera. Keep spreading the word, he says. Okay, so yes, I agree with him that whether it's young people, old people, you know, um, you know, Al Gore still believes that the end of the world is coming. Um, and uh, so whatever, um, I don't think, Elon Musk doesn't believe that. The national... Um, the, uh, what do you call it? The world. <laughs> Boy, I am slow this morning. I don't know what's going on. I know I had a, anyway, I won't get into why I might be a little groggy this morning, but um, we have the United Nations even doesn't believe that the world is going to end, except in the absolute most extreme situation. And they don't believe that's going to happen. And yes, what we are doing and what's not being even hinted at by most of these young people or old people that are screaming about uh, climate change is how rapidly we are electrifying and how incredibly uh, this is going to change the whole formula with regard to climate change and how fast it's going to increase the wealth of the world. Unbelievable what's going to happen. Now, 2035, no, I don't think we'll be 100% switched over to, to um, um, uh, electricity by 2035, but uh, we will be huge, we will made huge strides by 2035. And most people are thinking maybe it's 2045 would be a more realistic uh, time for 100%, well, you know, as close as possible to 100% electrification. Okay, then we've got Tired Dad 6541. 
I am a tired grandpa, apparently, this morning. Anyway, <laughs> I understand there are efforts to make the electric grid smarter and batteries and capacitors play a role. Maybe one of one of the Bryans, either Brian White or Brian Wong, who are always either right or wrong, they can advise progress. Well, he's, he goes on to say, in the legacy grid, 30% extra is needed. Actually, we're going to need a lot more than 30% more. It, uh, Elon is talking about how the incredible amount of additional energy that we're going to need because of the data centers. He says, in order to have sufficient availability, but smarter grids will help us about 30%. So just by making the grid smarter, he's suggesting, we could get that 30% that we need. And so changes are needed on many levels. He says, a home may use controllers on dryers, HVAC to, to limit usage, um, and then the neighborhood of the future may have a mega pack just to manage peaks as well as surplus from home solar. The neighborhood may well have an EV charging station or several replacing gas stations. They, this would contribute to grid stability as well. Businesses often negotiate for their peak power usages and it's easy to see how every super, supermarket could have a, a mega pack to help with their own usage as well as any EV charging that they need to support. Local relay and substations are needed to manage better manage the grid. Yeah, so this is the future, in my opinion. I don't know how long it'll take, but we are looking at distributed energy as the way things will work instead of centralized utilities. And so we'll power, we'll create power from our rooftops, we'll create power from local wind capability and thermal capability. We'll, all of these things are going to happen. And then we will have, as he points out, people will have... Uh, storage in their homes. They will have regional storage that will back up that local storage and, and people will have storage in the factory, they'll have storage in the grocery store, they'll have storage in the mall. Everybody will have some kind of storage because that storage will not only help them to, to store energy, and to but it'll help them to manage the energy to lower their cost and help the overall grid to be more stable. Anyway, all, very, very good commentaries. Okay, then we have Rav Linmo. Traveling Mo, I think. <laughs> so traveling more, traveling Mo. All right. Now that I have power walls, I no longer agree with your second statement. I suggest homes should have power wall. Apartments and condos and small businesses have a mega pack or something between a power wall and a mega pack. I was shocked in 2023 how transformative this was for my electric bill, which was an average of $100 per month pre-2023 to zero with a check sometimes late in 2023. The math on pay, Powerwall payoff is still probably longer than they will last today in his personal opinion, but for but for his uh, for his electric prices. But I also had electricity through two blackouts, my primary reason for buying. So, so this is kind of a, a tag on to the last one. Localized power walls are saving energy and helping people avoid blackouts. Um, and in some cases, people are getting paid if they're on the VPP system. All right. And then Traveling Mo comes back again. He says, I expect other companies to build up sales and utility storage by the 2030 and lead to lower gross margins. Tesla will still need to be making its own LFP batteries at some point to maximize the benefits of this division. We kind of covered that above. Then we have Steve Nelson, 7518, who's another regular contributor. He says, competing large-scale battery technologies have been in development for years. These do not use little batteries combined into megapacks. This could become directly more economical competition to Tesla megapacks. There are so many different ways to store energy. So one of those is you have uh, uh, water that is... Uh, put in big barrels and the barrels are dropped off the side of a mountain and then you power them back up the side of the cliff mountain whatever and you power them up when you you know so you're powering them up which is creating an energy a kinetic energy resource and then when you need it you drop them back down again which uh, creates the creates the power uh, you can do this a lot of different ways just with large objects they they drop some objects sometimes they instead of coming off a cliff they're dropping them into caves uh, there's there's a bunch of different ways to do this. And yes, uh, S uh, Steve Nelson, I think you, we will find that there is uh, more stuff, more ideas that will be coming. Uh, Jeff Morton, 5539 says, it's a huge market. So plenty for other companies too. And uh, Lar Lars Von Graf, I'm sorry, Lars Von Graf, 5794 says, also data centers and telecos, telecos Randy, for megapacks 
The lead acid battery installs there are a big part of each facility, as mentioned. Um, so, so he's he's talking uh, that there are more possibilities for mega packs than I even listed. Oh yeah, it goes on and on and on. Military, government, um, you know, um, even even um, uh, ships at sea. I mean, it's just massive, massive, massive applications. Um, we, we have no idea all the potential yet. As the price comes down, the potential opportunities will increase. Uh, and then finally, we have Colin Kaiser, another 7353, another regular contributor says, let's try not to forget energy collection also. If I remember correctly, Tony Siba, Siba commented on superabundance of solar PV plus wind energy reducing the total demand for energy storage build. Yes, I think there's also that possibility. There's always these counter um, uh, influences that are coming around. This is true. Uh, well, I won't go into the detail, but let's just say, yes, this is absolutely true. So if we over uh, overbuild solar and uh, on purpose, overbuild wind on purpose, et cetera, then all of a sudden you get this, you have so much power being created that you don't really need the batteries as much. And that would, as that reduces the need the cost would have to come down, which it probably will anyway. And so you might still be using the batteries even in a super abundant time because it's kind of stupid to just absolutely throw away this energy. Maybe, we'll see. <laughs> 10 years, 15 years from now, we will have to be taking a look at that issue as well. All right. So as I mentioned this morning, I did the video that was on the RoboTaxis and on S, uh, 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 what do you call it? Full self driving. I did that video this morning, a very successful video so far. Please, here is the card for that one if you want to go check that out. Remember, this is a series. It will be at least 10 different videos in this series where I take every single division of Tesla and talk about what is going to be happening in 2024, in my humble opinion, based on connecting dots and Elon statements and statements by other executives and other people that have an opinion on all these things. So, and some of those I might bring in co-hosts in order to help me out. Uh, but the, the series of 10, number one was the energy one I did a couple of days ago. Or was that just yesterday? <laughs> I think maybe that was yesterday. Anyway, and then uh, this morning I did the one on FSD and uh, that one is the card right up here. All right. Then um, also, please remember to place your order for your Cybertruck bottle opener. Uh, there are definitely people who receive money over Christmas from moms and from other places. Maybe you get your Christmas bonus for 25 bucks. You too can be a Cybertruck bottle opener uh, owner. Um, the information on how to order that is, is down below. Uh, and then finally, Patreon, as mentioned a few minutes ago, I now have a $3 level. So you can get in at the $3 level. You can get at the $5 level. You can get at the $10 level. Every single one of those will help the channel to become more successful in 2024. I have a lot of big plans for how we're going to double, double. Yeah. Now remember this, this channel didn't exist 14 months ago. All right. We hit something on the order. I didn't look it up recently, but something on the order of four or 5 million views in the first 12 months. So you guys like what we're doing here. That's obvious. I just want to make it even better. I want to double, I want to hit 10 million views uh, in, uh, I, want to, I want to hit a million views a month is what I want to do in 2024. And you all can help with that. If you haven't already hit subscribe, if you haven't already hit like today, please always hit the like. Listen to the videos as long as you possibly can. If you get three minutes in and you're like, oh, I think Randy's just talking about the same old, same old. <laughs> just leave it on. Just leave it on and go on about your work, but leave it on until the end. That actually helps the channel too. Anyway, if you want to talk about it on social media, Maybe you maybe you have a Facebook account or you have a you have people that are around you in some social media world who are also interested in what's happening at Tesla or who might become interested if they saw a few videos about all these things that are happening at Tesla that are going to change the world. So if you have places like that, put up a video or just mention the channel and tell people they really should be watching. Uh, talk about the channel on uh, on X. You know, put up a, 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 you know, let people know on X that you watched the video today. And man, this video that Randy just did on energy and the one he did on full self-driving, you really need to see these. Anyway, all that kind of stuff will help us build this channel up and get more people 
on the bandwagon for Tesla. All right, that's all I got. It's been great talking to you.